Good afternoon and welcome to Thorns, or should I actually say live at Thorns, because we're here in one of the classrooms at Thorns, one of the year seven classrooms. Um, my name is Charlotte Taylor and I'm the senior assistant principal here at Thorns. And on my right is Mrs Harris. This is actually her teaching classroom. She's going to speak to you today. And over on my left, I've got Miss Edmonds and Mr Davis, who are going to speak to you um, through the course of this evening. So it's a big decision. It's a big decision for any family. It's one I've had to experience personally with my own children. And for some of your um, young children at home, this is the biggest decision they've ever had to make. The decision about which secondary school to pick. And it's about making that right choice. And the advice I always give to families is to see what's different. A lot of what secondary schools offer in the same way as primaries is very much dictated to us. But it's seeing what we do that's different that could make the difference or make it the right choice for you. So what's different at Thorns? Well, at Thorns, it's L4L. Now, L4L um, was part of a journey that I personally began at Shyland um, 11 years ago. Shyland is our trust academy. And it was we made a decision to radically change the experience of year seven students arriving to us from primary. Traditionally, children at primary have one classroom, one teacher for 90 percent of their teaching time, and they suddenly arrive at secondary school and it's a very different experience. Some children will take transition in their stride. They, they won't struggle with it at all. But for other children, it can be quite traumatic to go from just one teacher, one classroom, and probably only a, a couple of classes in their school year to suddenly arrive at a much bigger um, school, to have more classrooms, lots of different subjects, lots of teachers, and lots and lots of different children. So what we committed to was turning the timetable around. And instead of year 11 being the first to be timetabled, and year seven traditionally in secondary schools, very often the last year group to be timetabled. And this leads to split groups and classrooms um, all over the school. Um, we decided to put year seven timetables on first. And we created what we call a literacy for life, which is a thematic curriculum, which has one single teacher for 17 hours a week in one bespoke classroom in the academy. And we found the benefits to be enormous, so much so that all the schools within the trust, Thorns included, now deliver the L4L curriculum. It makes such a difference to the experience of for the children starting, the progress that they make, um, and it's, it's shared in all of our trust schools. This model um, enables us to achieve better transition, and that's something Ms Harris is going to talk to you about because transition is so important. And it allows us to drive up literacy and numeracy standards by building on the excellent practices in primaries. Primaries get it right, and it's something that we want to use the ideas that they have at secondary. And we've adopted a lot of the practices such as big reads and big rights, which focus on the conventions of writing. And this is something um, Miss Edmonds and Mr Davis are going to talk to you about um, in a little bit more detail. The other thing, a thematic, um, curriculum gives us is that ability to look cross curricula. So to look at the skills that children need for all of the many subjects that they, they have to learn and understanding that there is a skill that underpins their learning in history. It's very often the same skill of inference that they'll use in their English lessons and it could be the same skill that they use in their geography lessons. And by focusing on the skills, the children don't get switched off to lessons and switched off to subjects. You know, children can very often make a decision early on. I don't like history or I don't like geography. Whereas when you focus thematically, um, they see the skills rather than the subject. And they then realise that there is a lot of connection between all of their learning. And this really helps us with the new GCSE specification. So enough from me. Um, I'm going to hand over to Miss Harris now, who's going to have a chat to you in a bit more detail about transition. Thank you, Mrs Harris. Thank you. So I'm Mrs Harris, I'm the head of Year 7 um, and that's what happens when you come to secondary schools. We have those. 
we get used to them. <laughs> So uh, within L4L, we provide a really nurturing environment uh, that helps ease the students in from uh, primary school. Like Mrs Taylor has mentioned, it's very different at secondary school as it is to primary. Um, because we spend so much time with the children, um, it enables us to build relationships with both them and the families. Um, that means that when you have um, in inquiries or questions or any queries about anything to do with your child's education or anything that may be going on within school you've only got one person to contact and they will know your child very very well um, and as a result of that we're able to personalize the learning for those children really accurately so that we can meet the needs um, for each individual and also help them meet their potential um, we'd like to provide lots of opportunities for the children both inside of the classroom and outside within extracurricular opportunities and trips. All of these um, enable the students to not only develop their academic skills but also their personal and social skills. Um, there's three stages to our induction process at Thorns. Uh, the first part will be a two day induction where we are optimistic that students will be able to come into school and meet their L4L teacher, uh, meet their new classmates, experience the timetable and the L4L lessons, um, and obviously get to know a little bit more about Thorns. Following that, um, parents are invited in as part of an induction evening, and again, get to meet the staff and ask any questions about L4L, about Thorns, anything that may be there child has um, come home and told them about following the induction days um, and then the third part of this process is our summer school so students are invited into school for a week during the summer holidays which again we are optimistic that we'll be able to organize this this year um, and this is um, an experience that is really valuable for the students we found that a lot of students take us up on this opportunity they're able to come into school, spend the week with their classmates, with their L4L teacher. All of the L4L teachers will be on site. We engage in a lot of fun activities. We spend time both in and out of the classroom. We've invited the ice cream man here previously. It's quite a, a fun week, um, which really should help allay any fears or anxieties that your child might have about starting Thorns in September. Um, so hopefully the induction process is very thorough and we feel that it does um, put the students at ease ready for their start in September. Um, in terms of the summer school, it is free um, and part of it is funded by our PTFA, who are a lovely group of um, families and parents who organise lots of different events to raise funds for the school. Um, and currently at the moment, they're organising a uniform amnesty. So we're asking uh, families to donate uniform that's maybe unworn or hasn't been worn very much, obviously due to the students not being in school for a while. Um, and they're going to set up a uniform shop where parents will be able to purchase that second hand uniform um, at a reduced price. Um, we are very conscious of the fact that it's quite a financial outlay at the beginning of an academic year, particularly when starting a new school. Um, so I'm now going to hand back to Mrs Taylor. Thank you, Mrs Harris. Um, just a quick reminder at this point, sort of um, in the presentation, uh, people have started to ask questions. That's absolutely fantastic. Any questions you've got, pop them onto the Q&A um, and we will come to answer the questions um, once we've all presented and had a chat to you. So. Um, over now to Mr Davis, who is one of our Year 7 L4L teachers. So Mr Davis, over to you. So I'm going to be talking about one of our most loved uh, themes in Year 7, so that's silent movies. This theme encompasses history and film around the world in the 1920s. Uh, we'll be focusing on the life of Charlie Chaplin and researching his path into film. We'll be using some of those methods as well in the films that you will eventually create in the theme too. Uh, we're going to practice comedy, slapstick and mime and we will be um, and we will make you an actor by the end of that uh, theme. 
Um, we're going to be focusing on communication, character expression, uh, body language and mood, and we're going to hopefully bring your presence and persona uh, onto the camera and then actually into the classroom when we uh, see your videos. Um, hopefully you'll work as hard as you can on this masterpiece because there's the pot potential to go uh, to the Oscars and hopefully you'll be collecting your award at the end of your performance. Up to you. A bit of a fact here that um, there is a rumour that Charlie Chaplin was actually born um, in a gypsy's caravan on somewhere called Black Patch, just outside of Smethwick. And I went to actually have a look at this place um, and there is a little memorial um, whether Charlie ever admitted to being born in Smethwick, I'm not really sure. But it's something that we include in the theme, uh, just something a bit local, something quite unique. Um, and the children really do enjoy that, um, that theme of, of um, silent movies and particularly the Oscar evening a really fantastic chance for the children to enjoy themselves. OK, thank you, Mr Davis. And so I'm going to go now to Ms Edmonds, who's going to have a chat to you about Year 8 l l Thank you, Miss Taylor. So yes, I'm a Year 8 teacher in l l and I really want to talk about the Grand Designs theme that is a theme that I really enjoy and I know the students this year have really, really enjoyed. Uh, the Grand Designs theme is primarily, primarily, is the primary focus of numeracy and design. Um, Around this notion is the practicalities of owning and building a library. So throughout the theme, students will be building on a portfolio that gets judged by our local architects. Each lesson then builds on this aspect and around this design process and their portfolio. So in each lesson, um, you will experience in year eight, architecture around the world, so researching on different architecture and um, how that can help with your library that you would like to build. The mathematics of uh, designing through plans, elevations and drawing in 3D and 3D models. There's um, the science within the materials, so being able to um, justify what materials you would like to use for your library. Um, there's a lesson on energy efficiency. Um, budgeting and the careers that you can expect to find within construction. Uh, we also, which is one of my favourite lessons, is actually get to build the library out of cardboard and looking out how we can do that, not to scale, but at a certain type of scale. Um, there's also a lesson on web design and learning how to do HTML coding, if anyone is interested in that. Um, also moving on to marketing your library and marketing all the designs that you've done and then ultimately you come to reflecting and evaluating this portfolio and by the end of the theme it's absolutely great because the students this year have been really astonished by what they've been able to create in this portfolio thank you in year seven, um, in year seven they have 17 hours of L4L and year eight it rolls out to just 12 hours of L4L but we continue with that thematic approach and I think what we're able to build in because it's such a concentrated amount of time we're able to build in those life skills and life experiences and it also allows us the opportunity to bring people into the school so um, architects get involved in grand designs local architects have supported us and we've had religious leaders in when we've looked at one of our themes called India and it because of the timing and the way it's set on the timetable it just gives us that greater flexibility so I'm um, starting to get a few questions in um, and one of the questions is about extracurricular activities um, I'm going to hand back over to um, Mr Davis and to Ms Edmonds about extracurricular um, in just a moment but I want to mention our link with the Hippodrome um, we are very lucky to link with the Hippodrome. I hope I get my teeth in when I say this. We have a platinum package with the Hippodrome, which means we have an artist in residence who works at Thorns um, throughout the year with our children. Um, he specialises in musical theatre. He um, runs some bespoke groups after school and also supports in lessons. Um, we are very committed to the performing arts, um, music, art, dance and drama and the children participate hugely in those activities throughout the school day and after school. But the Hippodrome really has provided us with so many opportunities, not just for performance, but to help children understand how a careers in the arts is, is really possible. So um, over to Mr. Mr. Um, Ms. Edmonds and Mr. Davis to talk a bit more about extracurricular. 
Um, so I'll start. So we run a variety of different after school um, uh, activities. So one being uh, we utilize our gym facilities on site. So we work in partnership with Lifestyle Fitness. So there's a fitness club that is run. Uh, there are um, art classes that are run over in the main block. There are ICT classes in our computer suites and on using our laptops that um, we have available to us. Uh, there are dance classes, there are DT and engineering classes, and we do run the Duke of, Edinburgh, Duke of Edinburgh Award and many more uh, activities as well. Um, you are in fact actually looking at two PE teachers as well, so there is a lot going on in PE in terms of extracurricular, a lot of performing arts going on if you're very interested in the dance and drama music side of it. Uh, Mr Davis himself runs the fitness room after school and there's a lot of uh, PE extracurricular in terms of netball, baseball, rugby, football, uh, basketball, you name it, uh, we more or less do it. So hoping to get that up and running um, sooner rather than later. Thank you. Uh, this about homework club because as, as, as exciting as these homework, these clubs all sound, um, we still provide a homework club. Over to Miss. So there is a homework club offered to year seven and eight. So if there are any students that feel like they particularly require some support or they feel that doing their homework during uh, or not during the school day but within school is better for them then that is on offer we've got access to devices and a lot of technology which can help support the students with the completion of their homework and often ha often having a member of staff there to support and assist and guide them is uh, really beneficial for a lot of our students thank you miss that's great and um, another one that folk are asking is our it provision and uh, we're an it rich school um, as Miss Harris has just said, the children have access to a laptop that's theirs that they use throughout the day at school and then they put it in the cupboard to be charged overnight. We're not at the point yet where we can send them home with the children and um, it has to stay in school and, and charge and lots of um, online platforms for the children um, to work from and to be able to access at home as well. Um, plus um, they have access um, to um, Microsoft package and um, throughout their time at Thorns, which gives them access to all sorts of um, sites that they will be able to make use of. Now, there are a couple more questions, aren't there? Yes, um, so I'll hand few, over to you. A few questions about PE kits and uniforms, so ties, etc. Um, before the induction process starts late June, start of July, you will receive information through the post about all of those sort of yeah. things, how you will uh, get hold of your tie and badge, your uniform and the providers of um, the PE kit as well, which is actually the sports shop in Kings Winford. But all of that information will be sent out in letters um, in due course and with plenty of time to sort all of those things before September. Anything about summer school? Mr. Yes, a um, couple of questions about summer school. Um, all being well, Hopefully it would take place on site um, the first week of the six weeks holiday um, and the induction days would take place early July. So again, we're hopeful that we'll be able to do that. Um, we did last year still operate um, the induction days and the summer school, but they were done remotely. Um, and despite that, we still had a really fantastic uptake from who are the now now year sevens um the new year sevens and they i think they really did find it beneficial um even though they weren't able to meet face to face when they came here in september they still had a good idea of um who their teacher was they'd been able to see us on camera we told them lots of information about us and we tried to do as many activities online which still enabled them to get to know one another but like i say we are hopeful that we'll be able to run those events on site this year. Thank you Miss Harris. Well we hope tonight we've given you a flavour and a taste of what we do. Um, there we've answered the questions that have, have been mm -hmm. sent to us but obviously if something occurs to you or you want to know a little bit more about um, anything that we offer here at the Academy please don't hesitate to get in touch. Um, our info at Thorns TCA is our uh, address, you'll find it on our website. Please don't hesitate to ask us any questions. Um, can I wish you all um, uh, a safe and, and well, um, we're heading to Easter, aren't we? I think that will be the next um, break. Um, but take care. Thank you for joining us. Good evening. <laughs>